Hey everyone, I'm Jerry D. Welcome back to Lunch in the Back 40. This is episode 34. Oh, I've got to do something there. Well, there we go. But anyway, thanks for joining us today. Oh boy, I got a great program lined up today. Uh, you know, I really enjoy talking and listening to our guest today. I I'm really happy that he's taken the time to join us. Uh, he was actually our first return to live music after like 19 months back uh, about a month ago. Uh, but first, birthday wishes today. Going to go out to Canadian-born Roberta Joan Anderson, Joni Mitchell. She turned 78 last Sunday. Her awards include nine Grammys and an induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Rolling Stone called her one of the greatest songwriters ever. Chelsea Morning, Both Sides Now, The Circle Game, Big Yellow Taxi, Help Me, Free Man in Paris, Woodstock, just some of her great music. Uh, her album Blue, one of the greatest of all times, and I know one that's in my catalog that you know you go back and listen to quite a bit. Uh, happy birthday, Joni Mitchell, and uh, many more. Um, it, you know, she is fantastic. Our guest today was recently in Northern Michigan, as I said, uh, sharing a co-headlining tour with the Accidentals. Well, that successful tour wrapped up last weekend. They had shows in Nashville and, Manf and Memphis to get things uh, wrapped up there. Now, some might remember Sawyer Fredericks as the winner in season eight of The Voice. That was back in 2015, where our friend Bliss, well, our Blissfuss friend Josh Davis was also in the top four on that program. Now, Sawyer has released four solo albums over the years since. The latest is titled Flowers for You, and he's joining us today from Troy, New York. Welcome, Sawyer. I think the last time we spoke, it was in a hotel room in Montreal, Canada at Folk Alliance International. You had just released the album Hide Your Ghost, I think. We had a lot of fun that day. That was really good. How was that tour with the Accidentals? It was great. I mean, they're, they're just wonderful musicians, so touring with them was super, super fun. <laughs> how, did that, how did that relationship with the Accidentals come about? So it's funny that... It, you, you mentioned uh, Joshua Davis. I actually heard about the accidentals through Joshua Davis. He, he was like saying that, like, oh, I think you'd really like these people and would get along with them. I'm like, oh, all right, I'll, I'll check them out and see what they're, they're up to. Um, and that's basically how that came about. Um, I ran into them at Americana Fest, actually, um, and then got talking to them at Folk Alliance. And then we got a thing together at Fountain Point with May Earlywine, Joshua Davis. It was like a singer songwriter in the round thing. And then they recorded on my uh, newest album, Flowers for You. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Let's go back to a little bit about you and, you know, where you came from. You were born in Connecticut and then moved to upstate New York, I think it was. Yeah. Youngest of three brothers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you were homeschooled using the unschooling method. What yeah, was that? It's so unschooling um, is self-directed learning and learning through life. So basically anything I'm doing is like my school. I'm, I'm learning through these experiences just as I'm learning how to do interviews by doing interviews. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of that. Uh, what got you started with music? Um, well, I mean, I've, I've been singing my whole life and my, my family had a big kind of like music inspiration. Um, they, they weren't musicians themselves, but they, they were great lovers of music. And I heard music through my whole life and then picked up the guitar when I was around 11 years old. My, my uncle taught me my first few chords and I did my first open mic when I was 12. <laughs> wow, well, who, who, were some of the, who were some of the ones that we were listening to then that kind of influenced you and got you going in music? So uh, I would say my, Biggest inspiration growing up was probably uh, Ray LaMontagne. Um, he's a phenomenal artist and he, he really taught me that I wanted to write songs that had a lot of emotion in them and storytelling. And that was kind of what I really got into when, when, I, when I first learned guitar, it wasn't like, like I feel like a lot of people were like, oh, they wanna learn other people's songs and like, they're like, oh, I, I, can, I can play this song, I can play that song. For me, when I, I, I just learned a couple chords and then I was like, now I have something that can accompany my voice and I can start writing. So that, that was kind of my thing right when I, that I got into. And you actually had a connection with Ray during The Voice, right? Yeah, so he, so it, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, 
I, I was like talking about how I liked Raylan Montaigne a lot when I was on The Voice and that he was a big inspiration to me. Um, and then Bourgeois Guitars sent me a custom guitar that was Ray, Raylan Montaigne's like line in Bourgeois Guitars. And they sent it to me to play on the show. And then Raylan Montaigne heard that I, I was kept like saying things about him on the show. And then he actually gave me a song that he hadn't released yet to perform on the song. That song was called Please. Um, I didn't actually get to meet him until after the show, though. I, I, I got I had the same manager as him for a <laughs> while um, and he got me backstage so I, I could meet him. He's a super, super nice guy. Perfect. Perfect. Well, it's funny how things work out, you know, <laughs> now pretty soon you're going to have your own line of guitars. Possibly, <laughs> well, right? funny, I don't have my own line of guitars, but I do have this one. This was actually a fan gift, which is custom built for me from Bourgeois. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> Nice. Well, can, can we get you to play something to kick us off here today? Yeah, yeah. I'll, right. I'll play the title track off the newest album. It is called Flowers for You. Hold up, love. I've fallen for you. It's this loss that I've succumbed to. Trust my God and I believe that in this world there's only you, you Don't seem to understand my dilemma My gut's been lying to me since I stood up Spent all this time but I ain't getting better Don't be loving on a fool, fool Slow down, I need to find When I'm down inside my mind Yes, why I go so far to grow flowers for you, dear. Long live I, caught and tossed and left to pry at my conscience for all this lie that i'm hopelessly searching for intelligence no spit it out now love if you got something to say if i gain your trust i forget my mistakes cost effective time is not spent on me i'll be changing your kindness So typical Slow down I need to find With no doubt Inside my mind Just why I go so far To grow flowers for you Dear Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, I love that voice. I love that song. Thank Sawyer you. Fredericks, our guest today, Lunch in the Back 40. SawyerFredericks.com, where you can find all things Sawyer, including music and merchandise. Holidays are coming, just saying. Just saying, you know, <laughs> give the gift to Sawyer. Uh, <laughs> you can follow Sawyer, Sawyer on all the socials and, of course, stream his music on all the platforms. You can find <laughs> Sawyer Fredericks and uh, check out his music. Man, oh man, you have you have grown so much, and it just keeps sounding better and better and better. I I love it. I really do. I, you know, you've gone from playing the farmers markets when you were eleven or twelve. You said, and uh, to some rather large venues. What's the big difference performing? You know, like from busking to doing the large venues. Um. Well, that's actually a thing that I I I feel has helped me a lot going to these larger venues is. Like, especially like when people like ask me like, oh, how were you nervous when you were on The Voice or stuff like performing on that kind of stage? I think farmer's markets helped with that because busking, you're, you're just trying to put on a, a good performance that you're doing. And you're really just like thinking of it for yourself and you're hoping to catch someone's attention, but you're not offended if they're just walking by. So you become, you, you're no longer worried about like, oh, what is the audience thinking? You're just trying to put on the best show that you can. Um, which I think helps with a lot of nerves for me, at least, um, cause then I, it's just like, all right, well, I'm just playing for myself to some extent. And then, you know, if I, if I like it, then I think the audience will like it. Um, but it's, it's definitely different <laughs> playing to a bigger audience. And, but I mean, a lot of parts I, I just really like, cause you get to hear the crowd and people get excited and that's, and that's really fun. Well, whether you're connecting with one or a thousand, there's something there. Yes, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's that's just you know, but like you said, farmers market is a great way to get started. Just to yeah, get out there and play, and that's the that's the big <laughs> thing for a lot of up and coming musicians. Get out and play. You were you were raised on the farm. Um, you did a lot of you know farm work. You had the critters and, yeah. and everything. <laughs> In our last conversation, you mentioned something that I thought was hilarious when you said, you know, some people find it hard to believe that when they're watching you perform that six hours earlier, you were mucking a stall. But, you yeah. know, that's, that's really the kind of person you are. I, I mean, it's like you're, you're an everyday guy who just yeah. happens to go out and play that, some great that, music. I, I, take, I take a lot of pride in that kind of stuff. And also like when I'm like working, like doing like haying season, like my hands are all like cut up from all the hay. And I'm just like, you know, I go play a show after that. And I'm like, oh, you have like a rash on your arm. I'm like, no, it's it's just <laughs> all torn up from haying. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm very happy about that to like show that I, I'm working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now your CD flowers for you was released in 2020 and well, we all know what happened to that. Okay. And I, that definitely changed how you were promoting the album and what you were doing. What kind of stuff did you do during that whole shutdown time? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I basically just had to go online for every, everything and trying to promote the album that way. And for me, like we, we were planning on, on getting like a whole tour together for that for the album release thing which happened just recently um but like i know a lot of people like uh, held held their albums because they're like oh we, we need to do a tour with it but then i just felt bad because i was like well the album was done i don't want to you know the audience is no longer getting a tour i don't want to take away the album as well so i i decided to release it just so my fans could hear it and we just promoted it as much as we could and yeah well it it's it's been fantastic and it was hard for everybody but again you did it and you stayed out in front of everybody which was like you say for the people who wanted to hear your music which was a great thing and um yeah it was a lot of fun. you you mentioned you, you know being in front of people but when you were touring with the accidentals and you were doing the co-headline tour and some people were there to hear the accidentals and they got sawyer fredericks and some people were there to see Sawyer Fredericks and they got the accidentals. Mm -hmm. So how did you feel? How is that feeling when you're getting that kind of a thing that, you know, it's like, okay, my fans are here, but here's some new fans. Um, I thought, I thought that was actually really cool, especially during like meet and greets and stuff, because you have people, I don't know, like it, you start to get like used to people coming up to me and like, Oh, you know, I saw you on the voice and, and doing all these like things. And it's like, Oh, I, I, I love your voice and everything. And 
it's it's really cool to meet people that are hearing me for the first time at these venues and like being able to like their only impression of me is my performance and my voice and instead of you know like oh they watched me on a show or they've been like following me on youtube and and whatnot um so i i think it's i think it's really fun and it, and it's kind of refreshing to have you know, you know like people hearing you for the first time how good was it to get back in front of live audiences again oh oh it was very much so needed <laughs> no, the, this this whole tour has been very very wonderful and yeah I, the the first the first shows i was just like oh this is and i i was a little worried getting into it because i was like oh i haven't been touring for so long so i was like worried about my voice and i was like oh is it gonna get like tired out real easily but after like the first like three shows, my voice snapped back into, you know, working order. And I was just like, all right, here we go. We're ready to perform again. And this is great. And yeah, no, I, I've been like telling my family, I feel like my voice has been in, in the best shape it's been for this tour. So it's it's been great. Fantastic. Uh, you, you did some so shows solo, like the ones you did here in northern Michigan. Yeah. And then you do some shows with your band. I, I yeah. think. Yeah. They joined me in uh, Chicago and then on, basically. But when I was, you know, in in the Michigan area where where the accidentals have like a big pole, we I, I did it solo as I'm, you know, for opening for them. What did you have a cousin in the band, or you had? So I I did I did have okay. um, he he's no he's no longer he he was my bassist he's no longer my bassist because he 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 got tired of the tour life it wasn't really <laughs> for him which I understand that you know being yeah. away from is is definitely difficult <laughs> well it sounded great I, I i just didn't know if you still had family in the band you, you know it's kind of hard when you gotta let them go you know it's just makes yeah. makes thanksgiving a little uncomfortable but <laughs> 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 well uh, what's your do you, do you get something different performing solo than with a band um uh i i think yes during during my um uh, like main like uh performances i normally have my set, I normally have a, a solo part in it. So people get to experience like both kinds, but I feel that my solo stuff is more, which sometimes I really miss playing solo if I'm playing with a band a lot is I, I miss being able to do like more ballads and emotional like songs, because a lot of time when I'm performing with a band, I feel like we're playing more like rock stuff and more things that you can like really like dance to or something. Well, I think that, I, I think the people watching are saying, hey, get this guy to be quiet and let Sawyer play again. So <laughs> let's let, let, let Sawyer play again. All right. All right. Well, I'll, 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 listen, I'll listen to the public here. Um, so this this is a song also off the newest album. It's called Born. Um, it's kind of a song. Of, I, I, I'll, I'll tell the story afterwards. We'll just play it for now. <laughs> Yeah, I only notice once I've broken you. So keep your love, yeah. Don't wait for mine, cause I'm a stable too. No need to go. Waste your time. I love you. Girl. Let me cry. I don't want you to take my scar.
I don't want you to take my scars. I want you to tear me apart. So long, you kept me warm. I need you to let me be born. There's Sawyer Fredericks. Oh, yeah. Joining us for Lunch in the Back 40 today. I'm Jerry D. Lunch in the Back 40 is something we do every Friday at noon live on Facebook where we uh, talk and listen to some fantastic musicians like Sawyer Fredericks here. His latest CD titled Flowers for You, SawyerFredericks.com is the webpage, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all those places where you can find Sawyer Fredericks. Um, you said there was a backstory to that song? Yeah, so that that story is actually a little bit about me kind of getting into the music industry at a very young age. Since I started doing farmers markets when I was 12 and I went on to The Voice when I was 15, um, a lot of that stuff was very like stressful at times and one of the people that kind of shielded me from that was my mom. Um, and this song is less about that and it's more about as I was getting older, I was realizing that I wanted to take more of this stuff on. So the song's kind of letting my mom know that it's okay for me to go through these struggles and challenges because it's the only way I'm going to learn. Yeah. Your mom is such a lovely person. She really is. Kristen, right? Kirsten. Yeah. Kirsten. Kirsten. She, she, she is fantastic. She really is. Um, I, it, it was a pleasure meeting her when I got the chance and, um, yeah, I can see why she's a big influence for you. I, you, you were the youngest winner at the time at just 16 and I'm not sure if that's changed now. I really don't keep up on that show. <laughs> um, you said, but, but you did set a few records with your iTunes releases from that show. Do you ever get tired of talking about the voice? <laughs> um, uh, only at times. It, it depends on like, I mean, like these kind of uh, questions are, are, are fine. I think I get more like bothered when it's more just like, oh, how was like each like coach and stuff and, yeah. and like, things like that. I'm just like, they're just they're just people. I, I got to meet them and hang out with them. And like a lot of times it's just like, oh, my God, it must have been so, so amazing. I'm just like, it, it was a thing. I, I enjoyed it. And, and yeah. there was there was good and bad in there. And yeah, it was it was an adventure. Well, during the show, uh, which you, you ended up for, there for a number of weeks, you never know how many weeks because it depends yeah. how it goes. But you kind of struck up a friendship, and we mentioned early with Joshua Davis, yes. um, and, and then you found a mutual connection with May Erlewine, who was somebody yeah. you listened to as a kid. Yeah, so that that was actually kind of interesting because, like, I, I, I yeah, I grew up listening to her, and during. Um, it was it was Mother's Day actually, and I wanted to play her song "Shine On" on the Voice. Um, and at, at first, the, the Voice is like, "Ah, no, you can't play it because they want like you know the new the new pop songs and stuff." So I wasn't I had to really push for it. And apparently, Joshua Davis like knew May Early Wine and had like been her his her guitarist for a little bit and like recording on certain songs. So like. <laughs> when May like got like the question from the voice was like, oh, somebody wants to sing one of your songs on the voice. He was like, oh, it must be Joshua Davis. But <laughs> it turned out it was me. Um, but yeah, so it, there's a lot of cool connections and, and she's she's absolutely wonderful. I love her music. And yeah, I I, act, I finally got to meet her at a farm block. I, I did a little like festival thing with her and yeah. I got to sign on with her, which I was so nervous about. Oh, um, boy. <laughs> Yeah, she is. She is a wonderful, wonderful talent. And uh, yeah, you thought she was a big star because her yes. CD was stuck in your mom's CD collection that you used to listen to. 
Yeah, no, that's why I was I was very confused when the voice was like, "Oh no, you can't play it." I'm like, "But it's 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 an, it's an amazing song. Everyone should know this, right? Everyone knows it. It's called Shine On. Come on, come yeah. on." <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I always say that, and my attitude is, she is a huge star. What yeah. you just don't know it yet. I mean, but people are yeah. finding yeah. out. Yeah, just just wonderful connection there. But yeah, you got to play that song. It took a little bit of work, but. Hey, thanks for doing that. Is there one special lesson that you've kind of taken forward from that experience, though, um, in your career? I mean, I, I, I always say that like the voice was a, a great learning experience because I mean it was basically like a boot camp for me. I mean, like it taught me so many things and to like be able to do interviews and get over like stage fright and work like through all these like get get over fears of cameras, you know, all that stuff. So it it definitely helped me be ready for a lot of the things after. Um, but I think my favorite part of it was just the the connections I made with all the artists. And I, I think that is one of the most important things to me is to keep making connections to artists is because that's we, we work together and, and we try to lift each other up. And that's that's important. Well, I'm glad it brought us a connection with you here. That's for sure. Uh, let's do one more tune. Yeah. All right. So this one, I'll, I'll play the one that uh, the Accidentals recorded some strings on. This song is called Lies You Tell. We get to do some fun guitar playing on this. I hit the road, dear. I left last night. I said good night, dear. Then you said goodbye. Oh, you said it would be better. Lies, 
said it would be better lies you tell no you said it would be better the moment that i left you lies you tell Wow, what finger picking on that. That was some incredible guitar work there, Sawyer. Thank you. Yes, that's Sawyer Fredericks joining me today for Lunch in the Back 40. SawyerFredericks.com is the website. Like I said, everything from music to merch. Holidays are coming. <laughs> Just saying. Support yeah, your artists. Yeah, ornaments. <laughs> 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 Support your artists. Yes, you can. You can follow and stream Sawyer on all the socials and the platforms. I told you before we went on, when I first met you, it was at a Folk Alliance. I think it was in Kansas City. Uh, you were playing a room. I, I ran into you in a hallway, and I asked if maybe we'd get a small amount of time for a quick talk. And, you know, I expect this entourage, you know, the manager, the publicist, the stylist, the assistant, and a few other hangers on. And you show up with your mom. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, and I'm thinking, you know, there's no way this guy is going to be the same persona that I saw on a TV show. And then I'm blown away by how down to earth and genuine you really are. I mean, being around you is like you've known me for forever. And that's the way you treat everybody. And it's amazing. And uh, like, I, like I said before, your mom is a lovely person. And I think you owe a lot to her or, you know, you get a lot from her the way you were raised and the way you treat people. And and it's just fantastic. Um, I I just have a lot of respect for you. Um, Do you still do work with Mitch Album? Um, Actually, I do. I'm, 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 I'm actually going to be helping for his, his charity thing. I do, I do it every, every year. I help out with that and I auction something else off from the voice actually going to be, uh, it's going to be a, a, a button down that I wore for my blind audition song this year. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I think one year you auctioned off the one of the bowler hats, but not the bowler hat. No, not the bowler hat. My the, the bowler hat is, is, is right here. Oh, there it is. That's the one. That's the one. Yep. Yep. No, you wouldn't give away the real one. No, no, no. <laughs> Can't do that. Can't do that. But yeah, yeah, Mitch Elvin does some great works for his charities and uh, I'm sure he's great to have you around and great guy. Yeah, he's um, wonderful. I'm going to ask you right now, who are some of the folks that you've gotten to work with that have just blown you away? Um, I mean, well, I mean, through through the voice, I mean, I would say the most amazing thing for me was getting to sing with John Fogarty. Oh, yeah. Um, so that that was that was really incredible. But I mean, like they, there's there's so many people that I, I meet that I'm very happy to work with. I got to work with. Uh, Gabriel Wolfchild, who is also from The Voice. Uh, I got to sing with May Earlywine. Um, Joshua Davis is great. And I actually, it's it's funny, I meet a lot of Michigan artists. And I, so I, I have like my own like Michigan artist family. You know, now I know the accidentals. I know Olivia Millershin. Um, so it's it's just like, I, it, the list goes on and on. And I'm just like, wow, I keep, I keep meeting more and more people from Michigan. Well, um, we're gonna have to make you an honorary member. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you plug in the earbuds, what's the range of songs in your playlist right now that, that, that you're listening to? From Bob Marley to Tool. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Every little bit in between. Yeah. Uh, do you have different playlists for different times? Um. Yeah, for sure. I, I feel like lately I've, I've been going more uh, relaxing songs for me. <laughs> Um, there's, there's actually a new artist I've actually been really into, uh, Jeffrey Martin. He's, he's incredible. He's a, he's a folk artist and he, he writes some really, really beautiful songs. And I, I always, always say like, I know an artist is good when he makes me cry and Jeffrey Martin makes me cry. (laughs) It's like those songs just, oof. (laughs) Well, I think there's a few years songs that make a few people tear up a little bit there, but just saying. All right. My goal. I'm trying. <laughs> You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Sawyer, it's, it's been exciting to have you again. And uh, I always enjoy talking to you. It, it, it's been fun. Like I said, you're such a real person and uh, it, it's so easy to speak with you. And I thank you again for giving us some time today. And uh, I, I just wish you all the success and hopefully we'll see you with our Bliss Fest folks real soon. Appreciate real soon. So. 
I'm Jerry D. Thank you for checking out Lunch in the Back 40. I'd like to thank the BlissFest crew for taking care of the background tech stuff today. Sarah Reinfelder, Caroline Barlow, and of course, Cindy McShirley, our executive director. Live music is happening, so get out and enjoy. Be safe. Do it at your own comfort level. Upcoming live shows include Steve Poltz at the Crooked Tree Art Center. That'll be Friday, December 3rd. And a great lineup for the Winter Solstice Celebration that'll be happening on December 21st. Tickets are those are available at BlissFest.com. Org. BlissFest is a membership organization, and our general membership meeting will be online Sunday, November 21st. Virtual happenings include Musician Mondays, the third Monday of the month. Virtual Open Mic is also going to be returning. And, of course, we do Lunch in the Back 40 every Friday at noon. If you have comments or guest suggestions, let us know. Information on all things BlissFest is on the Facebook page or at the website, where you can also listen to BlissFest Radio and find us on the Live 365 app. Now be sure to join us for Lunch in the Back 40 again next Friday at noon. Sawyer Fredericks, thank you again for sharing your words and music with us today. Follow Sawyer on Facebook or his website at SawyerFredericks.com. His latest CD titled Flowers for You. Put it in a Christmas stocking. Why not? Let's support these artists. And also, Kirsten Fredericks, thank you for watching today. You got a great son. You really do. Thank you for checking us out today. We'll see you again next Friday at noon. It's another Lunch in the Back 40. I'm Jerry D. Bliss on, everybody.